Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between Sevilla and FC Barcelona. And in this game, Barcelona has lost against Sevilla 2-0. It was a very complicated match. There were many times throughout the game where it was very difficult for Barcelona to go through and try to find the back of the net. This was by no means an easy match. And for those of you guys who are watching me for the first time, the way that I am going to be formatting the video is that I am going to be talking about the first half the second half and then give my overall review of this whole game now going into this game i believe that many of us and barcelona felt very confident we have seen barcelona come back in many occasions we have seen barcelona completely dismantle many other teams throughout this year so far and going up against sevilla their spirits were extremely high and so here is going to be the lineup that did start under ronald kuman we can see here that Stehen was starting sergio busquets was starting griezmann was starting messi was starting dembele pedri and a surprising starter junior Firpo and that was a big question right when we did see Firpo on the lineup the biggest question was what position is Firpo going to be playing in and then soon we found it out that Firpo was going to be playing as the right back for FC Barcelona and it's also very surprising to see that Samuel Lumtiti and Longley did not start in that center back defensive line and it's very interesting because we have actually seen Umtiti and Longley start within the defensive line that conversation is nothing new here and the last time we have seen Umtiti and Longley start, they played extremely well. There were many moments where we used to call them the French wall. But I do believe that the only reason why Kuman is not really favoriting using Longley and Umtiti simultaneously, it is because Longley has dropped a lot ever since we have hit this new year. His level hasn't been the same since the day Gerard Piquet was injured. But going into the first half, and I'm going to be very honest, Barcelona started very well. Barcelona tried extremely hard to gain control against a very tough Sevilla side, and one of the most consistent consistent things we did see within the first half was Frankie de Jong tended to start the attack alongside Samuel Lumtiti and Minguesa. And the main reason why Kuman does like to give those type of instructions is it is because we want to start the play very well. We want to choose the exact player and the correct player to pass it to into that final third area. And Frankie de Jong, when given those responsibilities, he does extremely well. And throughout the first half, as Barcelona were trying to command position within this game, one thing that we did see very repetitive was Lionel Messi. Firpo, Frankie de Jong. Players such as them were always trying to find Dembele and Dembele was greatly showing and greatly standing out compared to the other Barcelona players on the field. Dembele was really running game against Sevilla, taking down many players, causing a lot of headaches, trying to bring many players onto the right side as much as possible so Dembele can eventually find space for either Antoine Griezmann or Pedri. And within those first 15 to 20 minutes, Barcelona looked very promising. There was no complaints and we understood why Barcelona were struggling to find the back of the net. Sevilla closed down very well. But eventually, as we went to the first half, one of the things that we did see was that Sevilla wanted to play on the right side. And that was very, very clear. Sevilla did not want to go into Barcelona's right side or Sevilla's left side. Sevilla wanted to play on the right side. And because of that, it did three clear things. One, it took the ball away from Dembélé because as you play more on the right side, Dembélé is going to be seen less. The second thing that it did for Sevilla was it forced Griezmann to track back which meant that Barcelona lost one more player when they wanted to go into the final third area. Griezmann was way too busy contributing to the defensive duties. And the third reason it was because they knew that the weakest link in Barcelona's defensive line was between the spaces of Samuel Umtiti and Jordi Alba. And we are going to be talking about those players later down this video. So yes Sevilla knew exactly what they wanted to do. They came with a specific game plan. They knew the outcome of that game plan and we saw all of those things that we have just pointed out play out until the end of the match and as Sevilla tried to play their game they were very well close to goal they were players such as Yusuf or Soso trying to find the back of the net which meant that Barcelona were struggling and after Sevilla witnessing that they could create chances on that right side that is where they began to have the confidence Sevilla said look Barcelona right now defensively are not at their best there is a clear weakness within that defensive line and we have to attack those areas and then eventually on the 25th minute it did lead towards Sevilla scoring their first goal in the first half and the one player that did score was Koundé. Yes ladies and gentlemen the player that we did talk about in the previous video Koundé did score against FC Barcelona and no it was not a header it was not a, a goal that he got off from a deflection from the opposition Koundé scored a wonderful beautiful goal taking down one to two players and then kicking the ball past Mark Andre to Stehen and it was simply a beauty. Now the biggest question is how did Koundé score? How did a center back from Sevilla score against FC 
Barcelona and took down one to two players on the way. Well, if we look at the heat map right here, you can clearly see that Kunde's instructions was not to really act as a center back. Kunde looked more like a right winger or maybe even a right back. And this really goes to show that the game plan that we have talked about before for Sevilla was real. They knew that our left side, which is their right side, the spaces between Samuel Umtiti and Jordi Alba was the weakest link and Kunde was instructed to go through those areas and that is why we did see Samuel Umtiti completely get ran through by Jules Kunde. and if we look at the average position of Sevilla the game plan again is very clear you can see that the player Kunde is very high up the pitch not acting like a true center back because if you were to compare that with Diego Carlos Diego Carlos is much more laid back acting as the last man and we do have Kunde acting like a right winger alongside the right back and number seven but those were the areas that Sevilla wanted to attack and they got a goal from it and their game plan was extremely clear and the only thing that we can say is that this was a great chess move coming from Sevilla and Kunde was the heart of that gameplay and what really staggered us the most as we closed down those last five to ten minutes of the first half is that Barcelona sat back Barcelona did not react and this is a problem right because it is very inconsistent when it does come to Barcelona getting scored on first and not reacting and in result Sevilla did gain control we went from Barcelona trying to demand possession and tempo and then ending the first half with Sevilla gaining control with a goal in hand and Barcelona did see minimal chances we did see Dembélé or Messi or Pedro Antoine Griezmann trying to create around the box but it was extremely difficult for Barcelona to do that because Sevilla closed down very well and you can very well see that Sevilla have done their homework because you and me know that our biggest strength so far for 2021 is that our main goals do come through the middle it comes through the center we have seen Frankie De Jong score through the middle we have seen Antoine Griezmann score through the middle we have sometimes seen Pedri and Lionel Messi combine outside the box only for Messi to score and so everything was coming through the middle for FC Barcelona and Sevilla were looking at that they were saying look they have a very great history on trying to create and score goals within the center of the pitch and they have been showing that so far through January and in February what we're going to have to do within this game is to completely saturate and close down the center of the pitch because if we can do that we close down Barcelona and that is it right going into the second half Barcelona and Koeman did not make any changes Barcelona went with the exact same starting 11 against Sevilla and to be very honest there was no other choices for Koeman to make yes there was Ricky Puj and Trincao but right now in a game like this it was very 50 50 and we were in a position where we don't know if one sub is going to completely change the result or not whether it's good or bad but within the second half Barcelona did see more of the ball but I'm going to be very honest not a lot did happen within the second half because for the majority of the second half it was almost like an unstoppable force meeting a immovable object we have seen Barcelona attack over and over again only for Sevilla to win possession in the end lose the ball and then have Barcelona do it all over again only for Sevilla to win the ball again that is basically what we did see we did saw Barcelona constantly trying to work within the middle but nothing ended up happening and what greatly satisfies me so much about Sevilla's game plan was I felt like this is exactly what Sevilla wanted they wanted to find an early goal and then close down their side of the pitch for the rest of the game and not everything from Barcelona was extremely bad Barcelona created very decent chances we took shots around the box and then on the 72nd minute we did see an occasion where Jordi Alba was taking the ball into the box only to see a Sevilla defender pull down Jordi Alba inside the box and let me tell you guys something the ref did not see that the ref thought otherwise the ref actually thought and made the decision of no Jordi Alba was pulled outside the box and if you and if you were to look at that gameplay again right I believe that it was on the 72nd minute or the 73rd minute but you can clearly see that he was pulled Jordi Alba he was pulled inside the box I have no idea why the ref thought that the foul was outside the box when it was clearly inside and that was a big problem because that would have led towards Barcelona receiving a penalty and scoring their first goal up against Sevilla and let me tell you Barcelona really needed at least one goal at their home in order for us to be in a very huge advantage fast forward towards the 85th minute and Sevilla did score their second goal and you would assume right you would assume that okay either Youssef is going to score Munir is going to score or maybe even Soso is going to score up against FC Barcelona but it was none of those three players right it was none of the strikers of Sevilla the one player that scored the second goal for Sevilla was Ivan Rakitic yes guys Ivan Rakitic did score against FC Barcelona he has said before the match that he was not going to be celebrating if he did score up against Barcelona many people did think that Rakitic was not going to score up against Barcelona but he did and I 
have to respect it. Rakitic is a legend of FC Barcelona. He left hated, but Rakitic continues to show that he can be a quality player in top level football. And looking at how Rakitic did score, it was completely Samuel Umtiti's fault. Now, I'm not a person that likes to criticize players, but it was a drastic, atrocious mistake coming from Samuel Umtiti, where we knew that Samuel Umtiti was supposed to be higher up the pitch. The main reason why Rakitic was left alone up against Mark andre Ter Stegen is because Umtiti was not following the offside trap of FC Barcelona. Umtiti was nowhere near between the lines of Minguesa and Junior Firpo. And when we did see Rakitic take that ball up against Mark andre Ter Stegen, the players were even confused. They were looking at Samuel Umtiti and the linesman and saying, what are you doing? Is this not offside? Where was Samuel Umtiti? Was he right next to us? Was he too deep right next to Mark andre Ter Stegen? What was going on? And so it was completely out of Barcelona's game plan and Umtiti was in his own world. And in the end, looking at how Koundé did score and seeing how Samuel Umtiti made that drastic, atrocious mistake, it was not Umtiti's night. Do I believe that Umtiti is a great defender when he wants to be? He is. He is a great world-class player when he is at his best. But the inconsistency is immense. And right now, this Barcelona squad cannot afford to have inconsistent players within the starting 11. And so that was a huge loss for FC Barcelona. And that is it, right? That is how Barcelona and Sevilla closed down the match. Sevilla has won against Barcelona 2-0. I do believe that Sevilla came out with a win because of two reasons. One, it was because of Samuel Umtiti and his atrocious mistake. And the second reason, it is because Sevilla had the right approach in the beginning of the game. I also do believe that this was a game where we can safely say that Barcelona has won gracefully. This is by no means a disaster class coming from Ronald Koeman. It was just simply a great chess move coming from Sevilla and their coach. I completely applaud them. I do believe that Barcelona also do need to approach Sevilla much, much different in the second leg, which is going to be played on March 3rd at the Camp Nou. But the game is still going to be on. The comeback spirit within the players and within the fans and in the media is completely alive. Everyone does believe that Barcelona can come back and head towards the final. It is going to be very difficult, but if there was a stadium where we can complete a comeback up against a very great defensive side, it would be at the Camp Nou and Barcelona can get it done. And the other report that I do want to talk about is going to be a rival watch breaking news and it is coming from France and it says here that it has been reported that Neymar has left the game early due to injury. Now there is questions right now whether Neymar is going to be missing the next couple of matches or it could be just simply a discomfort and he reheals in about 24 to 48 hours. Everything is very uncertain but right now Neymar did leave a match that was played today due to a injury and it is not looking good for PSG at the moment and coming from a fan or player of Barcelona hearing that Neymar has encountered an injury, this is some great news for FC Barcelona because in 10 days, Barcelona is going to be facing PSG at the Cap Nou. Any updates regarding Neymar and his fitness or PSG in general, we are going to be talking about it, whether it's going to be in 24 hours or 48 hours, we should hear something very, very new regarding his fitness very, very soon. And so whatever does happen, we're going to be talking about it here in this YouTube channel. But that's going to be concluding today's post-match review. Let me know what was your favorite moment, your least favorite moment in this game. And do you believe that Barcelona can come back in the second leg that is going to be played on March 3rd at the Camp Nou? Again, I do want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.